Welcome to Tech Talks again, and today I have Yinka Adewale with us on the show. And Yinka is the founder of Quidi.ai. And Quidi, I don't know what that stands for, but AI is artificial intelligence. So, Yinka, welcome to the show. And uh, so, Quidi AI, what does it stand for? Quidi yeah. uh, AI is yeah. a payment platform that rides on messaging. Okay. So, basically, you can come to the platform and you chat with Kudi, which is a bot, and basically Kudi does your transactions for you. Okay. So that's like. So, so you're telling Nigerians to, you know, get on the phone, talk, start doing their financial um, transactions, not with a bank, but with messaging. I'm, I'm be taking it too far now. You know, uh, <laughs> commerce and banking, yeah. or even payment generally, yes. has largely been conversational. So yeah. even from the regular days of working to a bank, you talk to a cashier that, hey, can, what's my balance? Can you yeah. do this for me? So as um, Nigerians start adopting technology yeah. and with the um, young age of people we have, the millennials and all of that, on social media, yeah. basically living off these platforms. So we've seen that um, asking people to come and do transactions online is not so far-fetched anymore. Banks have mobile banking apps, but the thing is with messaging, it lowers the barrier of entry to making a payment. My dad, for example, can probably not use a banking application, mm. but we chat on WhatsApp every other day. So yeah. asking him to send airtime on WhatsApp is ah, a lot well that's, a, that's a difference, you know. Yeah, asking him to send airtime, that's a difference. But asking him to now send you money through through a, a, a message might be alien to some to some generations, not to my daughter, for example. Yes, we, we did have that problem where, why we started actually. So there was a time where we ran a Facebook advertisement yeah. and basically people saw Kudi on their timeline on Facebook yeah. and said, oh, send money on Facebook. And basically they click it and Kudi says, hi, I can send money for you. And because they don't understand it, that it's an automated system, so they think it's an human being. So you'd be like, okay, how much do you want to send? I want to send 5,000. What bank? Diamond Bank. And at the point of payment, so you have to like link your bank card. So the typical person freaks out at that point to be like, hey, hey exactly. I, don't, I won't give my bank card to who I don't know. So yeah. one of the things we've done at Kudi.ai is to actually enlighten people to let them understand that there's nobody at the back looking at your card information. It's actually a um, protected system that actually keeps your card information yeah. safe. And over the month, so we launched in January and this is... Well, January this year. Yeah, then. January this year was okay. when we went live. And then over the month, we've seen thousands of transactions that have been passing through our platforms every other month. So people are still kind of getting new to it. Yeah. But we've seen that all we have to do is to educate people. So Kudi does that itself. So you can ask Kudi, how do you work? Um, is my bank account safe? Is my banking information safe? And we provide those content to them in an easy to understand way. And over time, people get more comfortable with it. Okay, so just let's go back. So, what does Kudi stand for? And, Kudi and what does AI mean? Okay, Kudi means for money. For people who don't know what AI is. Kudi means money in Hausa. Okay. Or Kudi could also mean Kudirat, by the way. So Exactly. <laughs> so, but the AI at the back basically means it's artificial intelligence. So what we, do, what we do at Kudi is when you send us a message, what we try to do is that the system tries to understand what you're trying to say. Because prior to Kudi, the banks had SMS banking. But the problem with SMS banking is that you had to put the message in a structured format. Yeah. So you have to be like, okay, account number, space, amount you want to send, and all those kind of stuff. But Kudi is very yeah. flexible. So you could be like, hey, transfer 5K to Uzoma. Mm. And then Kudi says, what's Uzoma's banking information? Mm. And because it's an AI system that learns, so the next time you're sending money to Uzoma, Kudi already knows who Uzoma is. Mm. So it makes it easy yeah. for you to, to use. So, you know, I like that name, Kudi. So why did you choose Kudi? I know it's house of wood. I mean, Aren't you afraid that it will alienate other parts of the of the uh, of the uh, of the country? And I know I'm asking this question because it's um, it's an argument I've been having in my office, <laughs> and you're just now even giving okay. me giving me ammunition. Okay, so we wanted to be as local as possible in terms of when people see because it was a new system and we felt that the only way Nigerians could connect to it was if there was a local name that they understood yeah. um, for it to to be but we also wanted Kudi to have a personality where we could say it means money but it's also a person yeah. so Kudi as it stands could be I could argue that it's money today and I could argue that it's someone's name so that's why we eventually went with Kudi yeah. because it's something at least everybody yeah. understands and it's very simple and you know it's um, it's catchy as yes well. it is. yeah it's catchy so 
And I think it's a segue to my next question, which is, so how do you build that trust? Because, you know, how, how do you build that trust with, with, uh, with, with people, with consumers? With consumers? Because, I mean, you're doing thousands of transactions, to get to millions, it's going to depend on the trust and credibility of that platform. Exactly. So, um, looking at the customer adoption cycle, really, so the first set of customers we had that used Kudi were like the early adopters, which are people in the technology space in Nigeria and all that. And one of the reasons why they could trust it because we were using payment processors that they were used to, the likes of Paystack and Flutterwave. So when you come to Kudi and you're giving them free ads on this show. I have to <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you see like a Paystack form and you've probably been using these processors, yeah. so at least you understand that. Um, your card information is safe. But when you get, let's say the first 1,000 people are the early adopters, the next 1,000 people that you need to sign up, these are more hard that people to convince. So what we started doing was to actually work with financial institutions that they trust. So talking of the banks, for example, because uh, FinTech largely, the banks still get to hold the deposits at the end of the day. So you have to work hand in hand with the banks. Mm -hmm. So when a bank pushes um, a platform to their customers to say, you can check your balance here, you can make your transfers here, yeah. people get to trust the banks better. Yeah. And one of the other things we've done is the fact that the cycle in which you resolve um, if customer issues happen, actually is very important. That's one of the things that make people have trust in the platform. So because today as well, someone could send money and maybe one particular provider is down. So but having that trust, um, building that trust over time where our customers know that they could call in or we could call them ahead of time and resolving those issues, over time they've come to trust it. And we've largely grown the platform by word of mouth. So basically people talk to their friends about it and then when there's an issue, they go back to their friends. So that has been, a, been the way we've actually built trust. So I mean like, I think one of the spin-offs of, spin of this must be the huge amount of data yeah. that you collect the yeah. type of people. So, I mean, like, so what's the profile of a, average profile of a typical Kudi um, user. user? I mean, age profile, where are they from, um, what are they spending money on, what, what are they know. transferring for? Transferring for? So, uh, we ran some queries some weeks ago, and an average consumer that we have on our platform is between age 14 and 45, thereabouts and um, bulk of the transactions that happen are P2P transfers and people also pay bills like airtime, DSTV and all, all those other bills that people pay. So, um, so even at 14, people are doing transactions on the... At 18, yeah, people... At 14 or 18? 18. 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 of yes. course, yes. Was, 18, yes. yeah. Yeah, mm. university students exactly. trying to buy time and stuff like that. Okay, it's mostly university, so you can see you have university system, uh, students mostly will be at that, yeah, they, they very small ticket pay. transactions. Yes, yeah. yes, but they do have the volume, so they do more transactions. Yeah, so, of course. Yes, yeah. Yes. So can I? So what platforms can I do? Use um, use um, Kudi Kudi. Kudi AI. On. So we we launched on Facebook Messenger. Okay. Then we developed um, Kudi as well on Telegram. Then we're on Skype and we're also on Slack, like a Facebook Messenger that has about 70 million Nigerians on them. Mm. And you don't have to install a new application yeah. to use it. So you could just go on the platform, search for Kudi and make your transactions. And there must be a reason why you're not on WhatsApp. Yes, yeah, so um, so the, the WhatsApp thing is quite interesting yeah. because WhatsApp as a platform itself has not opened its APIs up for developers to integrate okay. into. So, Earlier this year, myself and my co-founder had some conversations with the WhatsApp partners and we're still in that conversation, yeah. but it's not, um, it's not commercially available yeah. yet. So, but once that is commercially available, yeah. we actually believe that that would also help us grow faster. So, um, so for me to, so like, to have a Facebook Messenger, so what do I do? I type... Uh, so you just search for kudi.ai. Okay. So it becomes like your friend on Facebook that you can... That and does your transactions that. for you. I'm going to do one. I'm going to try so one. So like uh, not having an assistant anymore. Exactly. Just, no, 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 who needs <laughs> an assistant? Just have Kudi. You can just, uh, just have Kudi. Kudi. Yeah, it's very interesting. We had that conversation again today on that, on that, on that particular as well. Okay. So tell me, so why did you think this would, would work? I mean, you, you had a job before. Did you just like, were you doing your job and doing this or you just junked everything and said, you know, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, um, um, be part of the rise of the machines. Yeah, the beginning of, of machine machines machine. taking over. Yeah, the machines taking over. Well, um, I f I believe that, like I said earlier, distribution is really key for 
whatever platforms you build, whether it's payment or it's commerce generally. And because as we've seen different revolutions where people started using mobile apps, now people are using messaging applications, the next phase of people doing commercial activities like making a purchase will be on these messaging platforms. Take for example now, there are tons of people that are on Instagram that sell products on Instagram. And what typically happens is that you see a picture of a bag you like, you DM the, yeah. the provider to say, I want to buy this bag. So we believe that conversations are going to drive yeah. a lot of purchases in the yeah. future. So what we are doing is positioning ourselves, building the technology, working with the partners such that at the point where this thing tips, where a lot of people yeah. suddenly wake up to say, I could actually just collect my payment, I could automate all these things, I don't have to do it myself. Yeah. Kudi would already have built that credibility, would already have had all the partners, the payment connections and all those things ready. So you could, you would just be easy to, easy, you would just easily do your transactions with us. When are you going to be able to integrate Kudi into um, small businesses, um, business process? And what I mean by that is that, you know, so I receive, when I get, a, if I'm a small business, when I get a payment, Kudi tells me XYZ has been paid to you, and, or if there are any problems with support, Kudi yes. can now start playing a role. Is that, is that an opportunity? Yes. Explo being explored? Yes. So we do have a FAQ service that we built mm. and basically what it does is that we can take your business use case and then we can run it through our algorithms and Kudi can build a knowledge base on that. Mm. So and one of the things we've done is to allow merchants to create like an account with us where they can easily receive payments from um, all these messaging platforms. So basically the, the bot serves as an assistant to the merchants where people can actually ask questions around what's the price of this, how do I buy this, mm. and they can pay. And Kudi does you all, all automation from onboarding the customer, making the purchases, also giving the customer feedback on delivery and things like that. And we're still testing out with early merchants and seeing how it goes. So down the line, we actually believe there's a lot of opportunity in taking payments for businesses. But beyond actually taking payments for businesses, we're actually going to automate the process of selling itself because now you as the merchant, you don't have to fix physically be there answering these questions, negotiating these prices, all those things can be automated by. Absolutely Kudi. fantastic. So final question, so this time next year, what would Kudi have achieved apart from learning more about everybody's transactions? Okay, so um, we, by this time next year, we believe that we would have gotten the opportunity to work with more financial institutions, more banks, more merchants. Um, one is because um, we, we believe that working with these people actually builds trust for us, especially for the SMEs as they continue to sell their product and services. They also want to be able to, to know that their money is not going to disappear. And so which, which is where, what, why it's key to actually work with um, financial institutions. So this time next year, we believe that we would have gone from the tens of thousands of users we have to a few hundreds of thousands. And then by that time, we would have been able to actually learn more of different kind of use cases we can build and the system will be a lot smarter because the more the data we have the more people interact with it the more things we can see that people want to do because the beauty of a conversational interface is if someone is holding your app mm. but if they are pressing a button you probably don't know what is going mm. on but if it's a chat interface you're basically giving them a canvas to paint on so they can throw in mm. any mm. message mm. and then that that makes you understand mm. and see patterns so you can actually build your services to solve those problems you can thank you very much for enlightening us thank and then so um, we'll continue the conversation offline. Thank, so thank you, you for coming on the show. All right.